Hey, it's Talknosis, and it's a show I'm really proud to do, something related to my hometown of Montreal, my adopted hometown of Montreal. A really special, awesome, amazing event. If you're in the area or you can travel, you should go. We're talking about Montreal Voodoo Fest with Linda Terry. Hi, Linda. Thanks for joining us. Hi, thank you very much for having me, John. Yeah, this is, this is a real pleasure uh, because uh, it's rare that I actually get to do something with the, the city that I live in. And unfortunately, I'm going to be away for Voodoo Fest, but it looks like such an amazing event. Uh, I understand that it's the first one. Is that right? It's the first one? Yes, it's, it's the first one of its kind. A lot of people, because you do know that there's a... Um, a, a very a strong Asian presence, a very strong uh, African presence in Montreal. So, of course, uh, voodoo does exist in the city. Uh, some people, sometimes they get together and have little events here and there, but something as elaborated as this one, it is literally the first one. Yeah, and, and can you tell us uh, about the what inspired the creation of Montreal Voodoo Fest? Um, it's a lot of little something. Um, I watched a movie, uh, it's more like a documentary about a year ago, a, a little bit more than a year ago, about two years ago, which was the hidden history of Haiti. And when, when I was watching this movie, it was more about uh, everything that led to the independence of the country. And there was this element about voodoo. So we, I basically realized that because I was raised a Catholic, um, so it's very the a polar opposite of voodoo. And um, I realized that, okay, it's not just a religion. It's a culture. It's a way of life. And I kind of wanted to know more about it. And I was talking to a friend, and uh, he suggested that uh, we do something like that because he knew of those little events that they were doing in Montreal. So he was like, okay, if we put everything together... Uh, we could have something good. And of course, we want to stay as much as possible away from religion because we're in Quebec, uh, but we are definitely going to talk about uh, about it uh, during a few conferences that we program uh, during the week. Yeah, exactly. And, and we're going to talk about it in the interview, but for, for people watching at home, you can see in the uh, the background, you have history, art, and culture, right? So this, is, this isn't this is necessarily a religious thing. This is much broader than religion. This incorporates a lot of things. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, too, you know, we don't really have time. We need to do a whole show on it. But, you know, the Haitian Revolution is not just one of the most remarkable events in Haiti's history or in Black history. I'd say it's one of the most remarkable events in human history, right? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's something that people need to know about. And and to know that that voodoo and voodoo culture played a, a role in this uh, um, in this pivotal pivotal uh, uh, human event, I think, is something that that's probably mind blowing for for a lot of uh, people. But but that said, and, and this is a big question, and you know we, we have a, a a a limited amount of time today. But you know, just do your best to say, you know, what is voodoo, or or what does voodoo mean to you, at least. Um. For me, as I'm just discovering certain elements about it, it's part of my culture. It just, there is no way that I, we can stay away from it. Uh, we cannot deny it. It's part of who we are. There is some expression, even in the Creole language that are related to voodoo. So it's pretty much who we are. And that's uh, one of the elements that kind of uh, bring us together when we are talking about Black people all over the world. Because yes, of course, uh, when the slave ship um, came to America, the, some of them stopped in Cuba, some of them stopped in Haiti, some of them went to the United, now known as the United States. But what we realize is that in all those colonies, um, there is this voodoo element. For example, if we go to Brazil, it's called um, uh, it's called Condomble. If we go to Cuba, it's called Santeria. Uh, New Orleans, it's uh, very similar to the Asian voodoo because uh, people that know history know that at a certain point, um, Napoleon lost the colony, gave it to the United States. A lot of them left Haiti and went to New Orleans. So, and again, I'm, I'm just an observer because I'm not an historian. I'm just the organizer of the event, but I got caught into it and there's so many things to learn because what I would like people to understand about voodoo is voodoo is very political. Uh, the same way of the Catholic religion was very, it's still very political. So a lot of things that, there's a lot of misconception about it. Uh, it's basically a, a way of living because uh, like the First Nation, 
uh, people that practice voodoo, they're very, very close to nature. So there's a lot of uh, things related to plants, related to uh, medicine and stuff like that. And it became a religion. So it, it wasn't a religion in the beginning. It just became a religion because uh, when, again, we have to go back in history, when the slave got together, they were from different tribe, had different languages, but voodoo is kind of what kind of uh, linked them together. Yeah. And, and can you tell us more about what you'd want people to know about voodoo, you know, what people might not understand about it, or maybe some misconceptions, right? Because I think a lot of people, when they hear that word, particularly a lot of white people, you know, they're thinking voodoo dolls and black magic and, and really a lot of racist stereotypes. So could you tell us a little bit about what, what people might be misunderstanding about voodoo? Uh, the crazy thing is, uh, the voodoo doll never is not an element of voodoo. This is something that had been created by Hollywood. So the concept of, of the voodoo doll does not even exist. Uh, what I would like people to understand about voodoo is just to keep their mind open. Uh, because when it comes to religion, I'm, I'm a very spiritual person uh, because I don't like the concept of religion. I really understand that people, we are allowed to believe in what we believe in. But the negativity about voodoo, again, it's very political, it's historical. The reason why uh, people had all those negative concepts about it, it's because when the Asian people gained their independence, they were afraid that other slaves were going to revolt as well. And the only way to stop them from doing it, first of all, you had to um, you have to scare the slaves by telling them that Asian were cannibals, voodoo kill people. Uh, that's the, the main purpose. Uh, it's an evil uh, religion, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it was that campaign for years and years about voodoo. So what I would like people to know is just keep your mind open and learn about it because there's, it's more than just a, a religion, there's like a concept there. Uh, it's it's uh, something that is very close to nature. And um, uh, it, when we go back to, to the Asian revolution, what they did with those voodoo concepts, it's more martial, it, it related to martial art. It's related to uh, using plants, uh, of course, to sometimes poison people because it's war is war. So they had the, the different element in it but it's not evil. It just some people could use it for evil reason because I mean, if we're gonna point fingers, what about the Catholic religion? What about the Protestant religion? So it's the, this is what I would like people to know. It's just like come in, listen to the conferences and keep your mind open. Absolutely. And yeah, so you mentioned the conferences, but can you tell people what, what to expect at the festival? Tell us about some of the programming, so the music, the performances, the lectures, the food, et cetera. Okay, so we are going to start uh, because I wanted to pay homage to our ancestors. So the first day, it's um, a Monday. Why it is a Monday, the 14th? Because the 14th is uh, what we call the, in history, known as the ceremony of Wakaima. So it's, Wakaima is a place in Haiti uh, where um, prior to the revolution, the slave got together. It was a swamp. And that's where they got together to talk about what they were going through and how they were going to plan their revolution. So, um, and it was led by um, a slave that came from Jamaica called Dirty Bookman. And so what we're gonna do that night is gonna be purely and simply artistic. We're gonna try to bring certain element of that ceremony and we're gonna have Bookman experience you know, uh, that is a, a group well known all around the world that's going to open the uh, the the festival for us. And uh, there's going to be some other artists. So it's going to be something uh, it's very important to us to start it on the 14th of August because it's part of history. And then after that, there's going to be some get togethers. There's going to be some artists that's going to showcase their um, their arts on Tuesday, Wednesday. We're going to have like a conference with Dr. Jean-Fils who is a pastor. 
Mm-hmm. And but he he wrote a few books about the voodoo religion. So we're going to talk about uh, the history of voodoo, the concept, the elements, etc. And on Thursday we're going to talk about uh, more about um, uh, the um, the voodoo related to um, to health and. Um, uh, to uh, more because what, when you believe in voodoo, certain people they really believe that voodoo can cure them of diseases. So we're gonna kind of talk about that aspect. And on Friday, it's gonna be more laid back, where we're gonna go more into the the artistic of voodoo with uh, dances. So we're gonna have an artist um, that is from Brazil. Uh, it was uh, Flavia uh, Nascimento. She's very good. She lives in Quebec. She's also, uh, she's not in Montreal, but she will come to Montreal and, and show us a little bit of something about how uh, that religion is uh, around her part in, in, uh, in Brazil. Absolutely. Absolutely. And is Montreal Voodoo Festival meant for people already interested in voodoo? Actually, no. Because the way that we set it up, it's for people that don't know anything about voodoo. Because everything that we're going to do is going to be simply um, about information. Of course, people that already know about voodoo, they're going to be there. Of course, they're very interested because um, the feedback that I'm getting is that, oh, my God, it was time. A a lot of people were very afraid about it uh, because of the negative um impact of uh, voodoo like people really when whenever you say voodoo you people are always like oh my god why are you talking about that even in my culture it's just asian people some people some of my friends when i'm talking about that project i have to go around the bush and tell them listen we're not gonna talk about religion it's gonna be about culture it's gonna be oh no no, no i'm gonna talk about that because my grandmother told me this and that so people still think that uh, voodoo is a bad thing. So a lot of people they don't want to talk about it. They want, don't want to be associated to it, uh, with it. But um, uh, like I said, it's a question of ev- it's for everybody. Because first of all, uh, the way we're doing things, it's uh, yes, we're gonna have our main event at um, uh, a place that is um, owned by an, uh, a nation group. That's where we're gonna have we're gonna have our opening night, and it was very important for me to have it at that cultural center because it was related to the Asian community. But after that, we're gonna go all over the place. We're gonna go to the Afro Musée, uh, which will, used to be called Espace Mushagalusha, which is in downtown Montreal. We're gonna have a little bit of something there on, um, and people that would like to meet Bookman Experience face to face can come they just have to go to Evan Brighton and reserve and they can like it's uh maybe it's gonna be like for two hours they're gonna be there take pictures with them sign autograph and there's gonna be some art exhibit and then uh for the weekend it's gonna be a family event and we'll be at uh La Tohue, uh which is in the uh Saint Michel um boroughs and everybody knows La Tohue. so uh Cirque du Soleil and everything so that's that's where it's gonna be and it's gonna be outside it's gonna be free for everyone uh the only thing is very important for people to reserve even if it's free uh because uh it's only limited capacity I think we can only hold like maybe three to four thousand people so we just want to make sure that uh, uh people are not too overwhelmed <laughs> by by the event. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, the people watching and listening who, who don't know much about Montreal may not realize that there is a large Black community here, but, but of course, a very large Haitian community, right? Something like 2% of Montreal, a, enormous uh, a contribution to the city. Is, is voodoo culture already playing a role in, in Montreal? Like you mentioned that there's, there's periodic meetups before. Like, can you kind of talk about the relationship between sort of voodoo culture and Montreal? Um, well... Because voodoo has always been that type of on the ground so-called religion, we know it's there, but at the same time, people don't really talk about it. So there's no actual voodoo temple in Montreal, but we do know that there's a few people here and there, uh, not only in the city of Montreal, but all around Montreal. Uh, They're trying, I mean, they do what they can, but sometimes it's just because... Uh, due to the fact that voodoo was always hidden, so people are afraid to come out. But we know they're there. And um, if I look at all the messages I'm getting, and there's those places where you could go 
buy some uh, voodoo arts and voodoo things called Botanica. There's a few of them in the city, but you're not going to find a website. You're not going to find, you barely will find a phone number. It's really people that know that go. Uh, but we know uh, that voodoo is there. And what people uh, tend to do, it's a bit the same thing that what we're going to do in the festival is the fact that they kind of, um, uh, they they stay more into the artistic aspect of the culture. And yeah. they, they, when it comes to the religion part, uh, it's a bit hidden. Yeah. Well, can you tell us a little bit more about the sort of the, the cultural aspects? Can you tell us the role that dance and music play in voodoo? Um, as everyone know, dance, dances, uh, within the Afro culture, the African culture, it's part of who we are. Um, be, uh, it's funny how, uh, back in, uh, the old country where people like tribes would meet and have dance battle. And now you see, when you look at hip hop culture, yeah. that's exactly where the dance battle comes came from and uh dance is it's kind of a, a way for people to get in touch with your own self and with nature and because you dance for everything you dance because you're happy you dance because you're sad you dance because you you want to pray to the loi you want to pray to your gods and maybe because uh it hasn't been raining in days so again you see the the kind of relationship between that culture and the first nation culture because people will literally dance because they they wish it will rain and when it rains they kind of they believe it's because they dance so uh mm -hmm. even myself i'm not a good dancer but it's like when we hear music, it's really part of who we are. And it's it kind of, um, it, it, that's a way to transform our own being. So that's the part of the, the what music uh, uh, stands for, for us. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned the, the LOA. Can, can you tell us uh, about the LOA a little bit, like who they are? And again, maybe clear up some, some misconceptions. Okay. So the difference between... Um, because when we when, when you uh, do the parallel between voodoo and other uh, Christianity, it's the fact that Christianity has one God. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it comes to voodoo culture, you have multiple gods. So that's what the law is. There's not one law, there's multiple law. There's the law for, they, they have different names. I don't know all of them. There's Agwe, there's Papa Ligba, there's, I mean, so each of them, they have their own purpose. You pray them for a specific reason. So this is one of the aspects that we're going to talk about because there's there's a lot of them. There's uh, Marasa, which are uh, twins. Um, and uh, there's uh, Madame Brigitte, who is the loi too as well. Um, so it's, um, again, it's a God. It's mo We have multiple God. We just, we don't have one God. Yeah. yeah. And, and finally, can you tell us, uh, you know, you mentioned uh, you know, voodoo for healing and uh, its connections to culture, to resistance, to politics. But can you tell us a little bit more about like how voodoo could change one's life for the better? Okay. Um, to how it would change your life, I wouldn't, I cannot say specifically. What I can say is voodoo, um, again, I mentioned it in the beginning, it became a religion. Voodoo is kind of a concept where men and women <laughs> uh, are one with nature. That's what it is about. Uh, because if you look at most of the the, um, uh, the people, like they work with herbs, they work with plants. They, they, that's what it is about. Um, it's about how you have to, nature is there to serve you, but you also have to serve nature because it's you and because you, you are one with nature. So that's the, the aspect. Um, what it could change in our life. I believe that we need to go back there. We need, we need to go back to nature because when we think about it, for example, I'm not a big partisan of pills, for example. Um, I remember, so that's a little anecdote. I remember when I was um, 
maybe seven or eight, I used to have cramps all the time for no reason. And I always loved school. And when the school would call my mother and say, okay, come and bring her up because she, she's suffering and I had all those cramps. She went to every uh, 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 doctor here in Montreal and nobody could find the cause of, uh, of uh, my cramps. And I was too small to think it's like, you know, that was becoming a woman or something like that. And we went to, to Haiti on vacation one time and my, my grandmother was like, oh, well, you know what? Uh, she needs to, to see that herb guy. And um, so the guy looked at me and he asked me to explain, to show him where it was hurting me and everything. And he gave us that little potion without even like having any medical instrument. He knew exactly what was going on. And he gave us that little uh, potion and um, it was just um, plants. It was plant-based. And um, I think maybe two days later, he told my mom, just give her one spoon of it. She wakes up in the morning, don't eat during the day, only eat at 6 p.m. when the sun is down. And up until today, even when I was giving birth to my child, I did not have cramps. So, oh, wow. Yeah. And and after after a while, I asked my grandmother and I said, who was that guy? And she said, oh, this guy, his uh, great grandfather used to be a voodoo priest and they know about herbs and stuff like that. They know about plants. So there's there's um, there's a treasure in in nature that sometimes we tend to forget. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, you know, that's basically our, our interview right there, but it's it's fascinating. Uh, I, I think it's going to be a really remarkable event. Uh, I hope it becomes a yearly event. I hope that everything goes really well. So everybody watching at home, it's uh, MontrealVoodooFest.com. I'm going to put the link in the notes. And uh, uh, Linda, the dates again are August 14th to the 20th. Is that right? Exactly. August 14th to the 20th. And of course, uh, on the website, all the information is there. People that have questions, do not hesitate to send us an email question. French, English. We have a couple of Spanish-speaking people around us. Um, so, and we hope to see you there. Amazing. Okay. Thanks again. Bye everybody. Bye-bye. Bye.